Very comfortable 67 degrees as we invite Kendra into the studio as we catch up with the Clinton Public Library. Kind of make a transition from the summer programs as we get ready for the fall. How does that work, Kendra? Correct. Uh, so for youth services, it means in August we take a break. We did do a couple of programs that first week of August, but um, we're currently on break because summer reading really takes a lot out of us, and then we're able to plan for the fall. Uh, but adult programming is still going on. Um, we still have some market music performances to happen. So, yeah. Getting back to the youth, how important is it for these youngsters to continue to read over the summer months as they get ready for another school year? It's really important. Um, it's called summer slide uh, that happens in the summer. So a lot of kids... Um, and you might even remember going to school and not remembering, you know, in the fall, like, wait, I don't remember what this math equation was back in the spring. Um, so summer reading really helps just kind of keep certain parts of the brain lit up and thinking critically and just reading 20 minutes a day just keeps that part of our brains going so it's easier to transition back into school. How has the participation been and, and how does it work? How do these youngsters get signed up? So we now have Beanstack which is an online tracking system that you can also download an app for and uh, that makes it we're able to actually do a bunch of other summer not summer sorry reading challenges so we can do a fall reading challenge a winter reading challenge um, but yeah it's really easy the parents sign up if you've got two kids if you've got seven kids you can put all of the readers under one account so you don't have to log in multiple times and um, what's yeah. the general age of the, of the ones that you work with so it seems that we get a lot of elementary kids, but this summer we made a specific baby and toddlers age group. Before it was just pre-readers, which was zero to age six, um, but we actually separated out the the babies and toddlers and the pre-K kids. Do you lose a lot when they get to the middle school and high school age? Um, I yes, but I think it's more that. Now they're reading independently? They're reading independently. Maybe they don't know that the summer reading program's a thing. Maybe they think they're too cool for <laughs> it. There's a lot of reasons, but I know we still have a lot of strong readers. There might have even been kids that were shy that came in to check out books, and I'd say, hey, you want to participate? And they'd be like, no, I'm good. Um, but they were still reading, so yeah. I, that's a success in my book. <clears throat> Talk about the adult programs. What do you offer there? Oh, my goodness. We have so much going on for our adult people. Patrons. We currently have an art exhibit uh, called Print Film Canvas, and that is artwork by Linda Von Holton. She's a pretty local, um, I think she's based out of Sterling, Illinois, and her art that she's sharing with us is uh, characters from books that have been adapted into motion pictures to celebrate both literary and cinematic creations on canvas. So these are on display where? Uh, all around the main floor of the library. Okay, and uh, approximately how many are there? Oh goodness, I would say easily 20. My goodness, okay, that is yeah. quite a few. So it's really cool. Um, my favorite, I think uh, she did a painting from High Fidelity, so it's a record but it's like a really abstract, like zoomed in look at a vinyl record and it's got blues and stuff. It's really pretty. Is that the one? John Cusack was in Correct, that one. Yeah. yeah, okay, very good. And I learned through this that that's actually based on a book. So you learn something new every day. Yeah, there you go. And you're supposed to learn. Yes. Continue learning. And that's why the adult programs are all about. Correct. So other things that we have going on. So that's just kind of a passive come in and just take a look at the art. But other stuff that we have going on, we have Penny Chase coming in and doing Who Are They to You, which is a genealogy program. And that's uh, Saturday the 20th from 1030 a.m. to 12 p.m. And that's at our Lions branch. And then we have another kind of local history program with Tom Keister. He's going to be doing a one-hour program about the Second Catholic Church in Clinton. There will be some display items and Q&A time. That's again at Lyons. And that will be coming up on Tuesday the 23rd from 1 to 2. How do you get the word out about these programs outside, of course, uh, the radio here? Uh, Facebook actually has been really helpful getting the word out about these programs. We make Facebook events and then we do like reminder posts on our timeline. Um, we also use Instagram um, 
for events. So uh, how is the participation in the adult programs? Um, it's been pretty good since I'm, I'm in the children's department. Right. I don't know, you know, I don't have a hand in everything that goes on. But now that we're kind of crawling, especially with our area, COVID not being as bad, um, I know there are other waves happening elsewhere. But um, as people are getting more comfortable being out, we are seeing a great increase in our programs across all ages. Again, visiting with Kendra at the Clinton Public Library. So music up on Main Avenue, not quite done yet. Correct. We have... Uh, a sh performance next week on the 24th that's the dirty water boys and we're going to have the vendor nacho ordinary taco truck will be there and then we have brooke byam on september 7th again with nacho ordinary taco truck and the unidines which we unfortunately had to cancel on august 10th i believe will be um, performing on september 14th and that's from five to seven at the lions four square park Kendra, you are getting ready to get your master's degree. Yes. How's that progressing? Uh, slowly but surely, I have one more year left. So I have this fall semester, and then I have one class in the spring because I took a summer class this summer. What prompted you to go after a master's degree? Um, so I've been at the library for 14 years. <laughs> I just had my anniversary earlier this month. and. I really love working with people and so to work in a library you don't necessarily have to have a master's. Um, there are plenty of people in our library and in other libraries that don't um, pursue that but it was just something that I wanted to challenge myself to do um, and you know who knows down the line if I want to become a director I'll have that. So education. 14 years you started in high school. Then. I did yep started a little part-time 725 an hour putting away books. Okay, so what, what prompted you to do that? Um, thankfully, shout out to my friend Hannah. At the time, she was working at the library. She knew I was looking for a job. Okay. Um, she knew that I, I was a pretty regular patron of the library as a teenager. And she was like, um, really super awesome job, super flexible, because I was in swimming at the time too. So like having to schedule work around practices and meets was pretty difficult, um, but the library has always been super supportive and flexible with those kinds of things. So here it has turned into a career for you. Yes. Amazing. So if people want to find out more information about our Clinton Public Library, because it's a year-round thing, how can they best do that? So you can visit our website, which is clintonpubliclibrary.us, and you can also follow us on social media uh, at IACPL, but you can always give us a phone call and we'll answer whatever questions you have. I always ask Susie this, so before we let you go, uh, what you're reading right now? Oh goodness, I was reading a lot of books for class this summer, but I am currently listening to a teen book, Holly Jackson, A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, which is a really cool murder mystery about a teenager trying to solve a classmate's death. Uh, you said listening. Yes, I'm listening to an audio book. Not reading, you're listening. It's still reading. <laughs> it's still reading. <laughs> Loose interpretation in that, Kendra. Thank you so much. Have a good day. You're welcome. There's something unique about a 133-year-old college football tradition.